this is part 3 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the different files and folders that we have in both these project types, Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly. We created these two projects in our previous video in the series. Notice both these projects have a file with name program.cs. Just like any ASP.NET Core application, this file contains the main method which is the entry point into the respective project. First, let's take a look at Blazor server program.cs file. Notice the main method which is the entry point calls create host builder method. As the name implies, this method creates the ASP.NET Core host to host this Blazor application. Remember, a Blazor server project runs on the server from within an ASP.NET Core application. In addition to setting up the ASP.NET Core host with some defaults, it also specifies the startup class to use and this startup class is right here. This file is present only in the server project, it's not present in the Blazor Web Assembly project. As the name implies, this file contains the application's startup logic and it has these two methods configure services and configure. Configure services. This method configures the application's DI, that is, dependency injection services. For example, this add server side Blazor method adds Blazor server side services. On this I service collection interface, there are several methods that start with the word add. These methods add different services for the Blazor application. We can even add our own services to the dependency injection container. We'll see this in action in our upcoming videos. Next, we have the configure method. If you have any experience with ASP.NET Core, then you already know what middleware components are. We discussed them in detail in part 10 of our ASP.NET Core tutorial for beginners course. These two methods, map blazor hub and map fallback to page are specific to blazor. Map blazor hub method sets up the signal R endpoint on the server. Remember, a blazor server project runs on the server and a signal R connection between the server and the client browser is established. It is this signal R connection that is then used to exchange information about events and the data that the server produces. So it is this map blazor hub method that sets up the signal R endpoint on the server. We'll discuss routing in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, understand accept requests for a controller or a razor page Every other request is mapped to this page underscore host. This is our root application page and this is specified by calling this method map fallback to page. And this page underscore host dot cshtml is in the pages folder. So let's open that now. As you can see, this page is implemented as a razor page and it is this page that is initially served when the first request hits our application. As we navigate to other components within our application by clicking on the navigation links or buttons, every other component is rendered from within this single host razor page. Notice it has the standard HTML head and body tags. It also specifies where our application root component, app component must be rendered. Components are the building blocks of a Blazor application. We'll discuss everything you need to know to build effective and reusable Blazor components in our upcoming videos. For now, just understand the app component is the root component of the application and components have dot razor extension. This root component is present in the root project folder in app dot razor file. We'll take a look at this file in just a bit. Before that, notice this host razor page also loads a JavaScript file, blazor.server.js. This JavaScript file sets up the real-time signal R connection between the server and the client browser. Next, let's take a look at this root component file. As you can see, it uses the built-in router component to set up client-side routing. It is this router component that intercepts browser navigation and renders the page that matches the requested address. Notice, in the pages folder, in addition to this host.cshtml razor page, we have several other files that have the extension .razor. All these are Blazor components. In fact, most things in Blazor are implemented as components. If you take a look at this URL in the address bar, 
This is our application root URL and the content that we see here is coming from this index razor component. Now if you're wondering how does our application know it has to render this index razor component when we navigate to this root URL, well we specify that using this at page directive. So the single forward slash here specifies when we navigate to this root URL we want this index razor component to be rendered. Similarly when we navigate to slash counter we see the counter component. Again the page directive in this counter component specifies when we navigate to this path slash counter render this counter component. Along the same lines when we navigate to this path slash fetch data then render this fetch data component. This error component is a bit different. This is automatically rendered when there is an unhandled exception or when we explicitly navigate to the path slash error. Now all these components are rendered by our root component, app component. For a given path, if a match is found, this found property is used and route view renders that matching component. If a match is not found, obviously this not found property is used and we see this message, sorry, there's nothing at this address. For example, we don't have anything at this path slash ABC. So we see that message as expected. Notice both these sections found and not found uses a layout file called main layout and this file is present in the shared folder. The navigation menu that we see on the left hand side is coming from this nav menu component and this component is again present in the shared folder in this file navmenu.razor. We'll look at this file in just a bit but before that notice in this main div here we have a call to at body. So this is the location where our routed components like this index, fetch data, counter are rendered. So when we navigate to the root URL, this index component is rendered at this location where we have the call to at body. Similarly, when we navigate to slash counter, the index component is replaced with this counter component at this same location. Now let's take a look at this nav menu component. This is straightforward HTML. The code that is specific to Blazor is this nav link component which renders an anchor element. All these navigation menu items that we see on the sidebar are anchor elements rendered by the respective nav link elements here. So the home navigation menu item points to the root application URL, counter points to slash counter, fetch data to slash fetch data. Now this nav link component is intelligent enough to apply the selected style to the menu item whose component is currently displayed. For example, when we navigate to slash counter, the counter component is displayed and the respective menu item is highlighted. So the end user knows he is currently on the counter page. www root, this folder contains the static files like CSS, images, JavaScript, etc. This data folder contains code files related to the sample weather forecast service. Underscore imports dot razor. This file is like underscore view imports dot cshtml in an ASP.NET Core MVC application. This file contains the common namespaces so we do not have to include them in every razor component where we need these namespaces. Finally app settings dot json. Just like an ASP.NET Core MVC project a Blazor project also uses this file to store configuration settings. The file that is specific to Blazor WebAssembly project is this index.html. This is the root page in a Blazor WebAssembly project and as you can see it is implemented as a standard HTML page. When a first request hits the application it is this page that is initially served. It has the standard HTML head and body tags. It specifies where the root application component should be rendered. It also loads the Blazor WebAssembly JavaScript file. It is this file that is responsible for downloading the compiled Blazor application itself, its dependencies and the .NET runtime. It also initializes the runtime to run the Blazor app in the browser. One very important point to keep in mind is Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly are just two different ways we can host a Blazor application. Remember, everything in a Blazor application is a Razor component.
components are the fundamental building blocks of a Blazor application. The way we build these components is the same for a Blazor server app as well as for a Blazor WebAssembly app. So the point that I'm trying to make is there is just one Blazor framework and the way we build the Blazor server app and the Blazor WebAssembly app is very similar. The only difference is in the way the app is hosted. So if implemented properly, it's easy to convert a Blazor server app to a Blazor WebAssembly app and vice versa. Blazor WebAssembly is still in preview and not yet officially released. So as part of this course, we'll be building a Blazor server app. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.